Super test. 0.10.10 Arms race, clan battles, and other news. The closed testing of update 0.10.10 will soon begin. This update marks the return of arms race and a new season of clan battles alongside some other news. <laughs> Caster to log. Thank you for the 24. Mm. Please note that all information in the development blog is preliminary. Announced adjustments and features may change multiple times during testing. Arms race. Oh shit. Arms race returns. What have they changed? There were two power ups added. The armament damage increase. Oh shit. What? So you. Oh shit. Increasing shell damage or some stuff. I wonder if it's gonna be if it's percentage based. Something like Yamato or whatever with percentage based increase could be filthy or Shikishima. And the current maximum HP increase. If these are percentage based, then who we battleships are gonna like those things. There were the following power ups removed: the reload time enhancement of a ship, of a ship's consumables, uh, the ship's maximum speed and rudder shift time increase, together with engine cooling reload time reduction. Okay. They removed the handling buffs. Okay, never mind. I said battleships were gonna like it, but this this is rough. Now the power-up that replenishes the ship's HP first restores parts of the ship that cannot be repaired by the repair party. Ooh, that makes it a lot stronger. As well as this, the effectiveness is the power was reduced. Oh, fuck. Okay, never mind. <laughs> they, they giveth and they taketh away. An economic reward for the players who collected power-ups was added, while the number of power-up levels decreased from 6 to 3. Okay, so pick going farming the power. This is good because so many people don't understand to pick them up. So giving them a reward to do it is good, but six to three is a pretty hefty. Oh, but they make they make them stronger in return. Okay, that's really good because this this player base they it, they need incentives. They really need incentives because otherwise they don't understand. Like just look at convoy mode. I'm supposed to escort the convoy in the convoy escort mode what no way since this change more power-ups will appear in a neutral ground while the teams will begin the battle in the same wide formation as in random battles interesting in the 0 0.10 for the opt hours of future will be feature will be available as a 12 versus 12 9 and 10 okay interesting the clan battles throughout the period of the 17th of November to the 3rd of January, the 15th season clan battles will be held 7 versus 7 battle aboard the tier 10 ships. <gasps> Holy shit! Oh my god, wait, is this real? The competitive the competitive scene must be celebrating. Holy shit, did they actually, for the first time in history, actually listen to, to feedback? Did he actually listen to their community for the first time in God knows how long? Oh my God, this this is literally what comp players have been dreaming of. No more than two battleships per team. A team cannot include two of the same ships. Wow, they've actually learned. Petro spam limited, CVs limited. Is this real life? Wow. Is this real life actually a rule set that might be enjoyable for the players to play? It's a bone I'll take. I cried of happiness last night. Understandable. Interesting. Well, that's that must make the comp players really happy. I'm surprised. To diversify the format and to shake up the existing clan battles gameplay among tier 10 ships, we decided to hold a new season without the aircraft carriers. In future season, aircraft carriers will be available. Ah, oh. You know what? You know what they need to see now? They need to see people playing clan battles like crazy. They need to see their most popular CB season ever. They need to see like a 200% increase in clan battles played. That's what they need to see now. Because then, then they can't argue that, oh, silent majority actually really, really loves CVs. No, they need to see, like, an insane amount of people playing clan battles now, so that any bullshit they try to throw our way doesn't work. The tier 6 season killed my clan. Yeah, it was, really, it was horrendous junk. 
Other than use and changes. The availability, price, and characteristics of some signals and camouflages were changed. For the meritorious service, Rising Blue Lagoon and Economic Signal India Bravo Tarhi are no longer able to be obtained. Okay. The bonuses and price type of Type 1 and 2 are changed. The camouflage is now grant minus three ships that take in four percent of the texture shells dispersing. The camouflage price is what? I mean, one of the reasons why people really liked one of these camos was because there was a camo that didn't give you detectability, but it just gave you dispersion, and you could use it on lighthouse builds. But holy Jesus! They really want to drain your credits. This is a huge increase. Jesus. Triple the price. We work on the separation of exterior elements, e.g. camouflage signals, from the economic bonuses. What? The aforementioned changes of availability and the characteristics of camouflage signals are just part of that big change. We shall share more detail. Oh, no. They're trying to nerf your income, aren't they? They want to make your premium premium ships more profitable compared to normal ships because right now if you slap credit flags on normal ships you can make a lot of money and i think they don't like that camos and flags on normal ships give you a lot of credits but now they're trying to trying to separate from the economic bonuses uh oh this is somehow going to end up being a huge economic nerf trust me on this Everything they've done recently have been to make the game less friendly to free-to-play players. The achievements, everything. Guaranteed. They want people to have to buy silver, that's what I'm thinking. There were five achievements added that are only obtainable through divisions. That, that's brilliant though, but I mean, they don't give any flags. Your division has to destroy seven or more. Hand to hand, your division has ten. Brothers in arm, each division has to destroy. Like, I mean, this is cool and all, but if they don't give you any flags, it's just like it's empty buttons. The general offense is that the PR department has to destroy ships of three different times. See, I was I was so happy when I read all of this. Like, I was so happy for the comp players, but uh, this this is. I think they're good. They're, they're, they're gonna do something even greedier. That's what I'm worried. They're gonna do something. They're they're absolutely gonna nerf your income. There is no way they're gonna be helping your income. Income. They're gonna be nerfing it. The aforementioned achievements can be obtained in random division stars. The special bonuses for playing together with each member of your clan have now been changed. Now the division star can be obtained three times. Having achieved the victory, obtaining yada yada yada. Throughout the entirety of updates here, the engagement stage of naval battles will be conducted in a group format. Clans get randomly distributed in groups of 25 or 50 clans. The amount of oil received at this stage will depend not only on the number of collectors charged, but also on the place of the clan in the group. <coughs> With the receipt, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But this is a lot of empty things that don't really give you anything. I guess they look nice. New content. German early access. Mm, I guess the badge looks pretty cool. I mean, ultimately, Ger I feel like German flags are so easy because red, white, and black just look so good no matter what you do. In the framework of the upcoming Black Friday event, we have implemented the black versions of Saipan, Pomer, Yoshino, Loyang, and Dunkirk. Five thematical patches and five flags, two types of Black Friday containers. They look good. They look good. But selling tier 9s and tier 10s for in loot boxes, or technically selling tier 10 and tier 9 premiums for cash, is pretty goddamn greedy. No matter how you look at it, it's pretty goddamn greedy. And the player base that is already playing Pomer and Yoshino isn't exactly stellar to put it lightly now we're gonna have a lot of really potato tier 9 tier 10 players oof oh well 
I mean, I'm not even surprised anymore. I remember that when they said we will never sell tier 10 premiums. I remember that. Who else remembers chat? We won't sell tier 10 premiums. Man, that shit died fast. That shit really became a landslide, didn't it? Holy shit. I remember me too, yep. That really became a landslide of selling them and they're selling them in loot boxes now as well. In memory of the attack of Pearl Harbor anniversary, we have also added Roger Archibald and Kochi Nagata commanders, the memorial of the Arizona battleship flag, the eight years of attack on Pearl Harbor patch. Hmm, that's a pretty cool patch. For the C Smackdown replays competition, the same name, Flying Patchics. Okay. Is C Smackdown still happening? I haven't seen those in ages. Back in time, they even said uh, no tier 9 for cash. Yeah, I know, I know. That collapsed a long time ago, though. They kind of snuck in on the tier 9 first with selling free XP premiums, and then you could use cash to get to convert XP to free XP and then get tier 9 premiums. But now they've just gone to selling them directly, and now then they later did the same thing with tier 10. They kind of crawled in on the tier 10s uh, with different resources, and then they just started straight up selling them. Okay. Interesting. Sharks Rage Permanent Camo. Ooh, that looks pretty good. That's pretty unique. I kind of like that, though. That looks pretty cool. For Austin, huh? Blue Sky. Mm, looks pretty cool as well. Four years. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Let's. What else do we have? Mm. New ships. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Super test 0.10.10. New ships. Pan Asian researcher will tier 5 to 10 cruisers as well as tier 9 Pan Asian cruiser Dalian have been added to the game for testing. Please note that all information in the development blog is preliminary. Yep, yep, yep. Research. Okay. Chunking Rahmat Chamhon Champon Champon Chumpon no idea okay Harbin Seyong Jinan Yinan I think this was supposed to be pronounced like G wasn't it Jinan I can't remember Chunking Rahmat we've looked at this this was kind of the copy paste line wasn't it Harbin Seyong Gina. Okay. Tier 5 to 7 ships were developed on the basis of real ships and real British and American ships. Harbin is a small cruiser that was being developed in the USSR at the turn of 1930-1940s. Tier 9 and Tier 10 are variant American, well they're copy-paste American cruisers. Um, the ships of the new branch are distinguished by the small caribou guns, yada yada. Oh, they don't even mention the, the Dido, the copy past the Dido. Interesting. Imagine that Pain Asian line gets a Dido before Royal Navy gets a Dido. The ship of New Branch are distinguished by the small caribou guns, high rate of fire, and powerful deep water torpedoes, but rather low survivability. Thank you, Ralzio di Sigore, for the nine months. All cruisers have smoke generator consumable with reduced reload time and starting from tier five defensive tier six sorry defensive AA fire. Tier eight to ten ships are equipped with the reload booster and from tier nine repair part. Okay. I remember when Minotaur couldn't get the HE because Wargaming said that um, fast reloading low caliber HE spam plus smoke was a toxic combination to play against. So that's why Minotaur had to only get AP and no HE. And then they sold the small ENSC and now we have an entire line of them. That's pretty good. I like every time I see Wargaming do something, I can go back and, and look at their previous statements and realize, wow, you guys have really fallen far. Like, you guys really have fallen far. Like, I remember all your beautiful promises and words, and and then I look at the current state, and goddamn. The turrets on the Rahmat are the 133mm ones. I don't understand. The 130mm turrets are totally different. Hmm. Interesting. 
Pan Asian Cruiser Dahlia, Tier 9. A variant of a small cruiser project developed in the USSR featuring dual purpose artillery, MK6, with the enhanced anti submarine armament of the post war period. The ship is armed with 10 130mm guns in five turrets. What the hell? With flat shell ballistics and four triple torpedo tubes with standard torpedoes, unlike researchable Pan Asian cruisers. Dalian is equipped with smoke generator with a short reload time. Oh no. Repair party and hydroacoustic search and also has a decent concealment. Also, however, the ship is has weak armor and high place citadel. If it's anything, is this like a small tier 9 small lens? Is this a tier 9 small lens? 10 guns, smoke. They say weak armor, but in World of Warships, like if you look at small lens, having thin citadel armor just leads to overpens. High place citadel. I can literally see the outline of the citadel here. You guys can, can you see that? You can see the outline. That is not a particularly high place compared to anything else. If it's a thin ship, which it looks like it is, and the armor is thin, then battleships are all going to overpen this thing. Tier 9. It looks like Tier 9 small ends. Let's hope it's not, but... Jesus. Four triple torpedo tubes. Ship's characteristics. Okay. Here we go, boys. <coughs> okay. Tier 5. 22.6. 3x252, 12k range, Jesus, that's really short low tier range. 25mm pen, that's plenty at tier 5. Reload 7.5. 2x3. Whoa, these torps, whoa, these torps hit like a truck. 15.8k 8K torps at that tier, Jesus. 16. Hmm. Mm. Yep. See, that's what I'm thinking as well. They're literally going to make Royal Navy uh, Dido a premium. Okay, 61 knots, reload 85. Deep water, so they're stealthy as shit. So this thing is already has more torpedo power than the Aelbing. <laughs> mm, two flak. Interesting. Actually having some flak at tier 5. 32.2, so the shift. 10.3 conceal. 10.3. That's uh, eight, that's nine KM. Nine KM. Nine KM conceal at tier five. And it has smoke as well. This thing might be okay-ish. Depends on the damage output, but. The smoke firing penalty is really low. The smoke firing penalty is really, really low. 4.6. So you can kind of smoke up in front of them and just farm. Interesting. Rahmat. 23.6. Not a big health gain. Plating is thin as hell. 5x2, 113. So the, the guns are supposed to be 113 millimeters. 12.5. Range is still junk. 90 millimeter pen. Wait, the pen actually went down. The pen went down a lot. If it's out, sure. Uh, slow HE velocity. Looks like really lazy arcs. Fast reload of 5.2 with 10 guns. Interesting. 2x3, same torps. Mid range. Mm, okay. -ish. Got a little bit of flak as well. Turning circle f handles like a dream, though. Look at this turning circle for cruiser chat. Jesus, 580. That outturns a lot of DDs. Surface detect 10.3. So that's the same conceal, 9km conceal. Even better smoke firing, though, 4.3. Available. Damage control defensive smoke. Interesting. Jelty length, thank you for the 10 months. It's HMS Lightning Guns? No. Lightning has 120 millimeter guns. This is actually Daring and Jutland guns. They have 130 millimeters. Lightning actually has 120 millimeter guns. Tumpu! Thank you, my dude, for the five gifted subs. Appreciate it. 
Jump on. Jump on? I appreciate it, my dude. <laughs> Seb. 7.94, thank you for the 28. Chump on 26.4 at tier 7. Still 10 millimeter plating. Interesting. 6x2, 127. Man, the caliber changes every every tier, it looks. 21 millimeter pen. Really low fire chance. 6.2 second reload. But you do have you do have 12 guns. So I guess that you can do, put out some filthy damage though. Range is starting to become iffy though. 12.7? This is like, what? Tech Tree Atlanta? Obnoxious? Thank you. Torpedo Tubes, 2x4. 16.6k. 9.5k range, 62. Oh, these are deep rows. Mm. Mm. Harabek Weathers, thank you for the 12. So you got two, four torps on both sides that hit like a truck, deep waters, good range. These can be pretty nasty because they're deep waters. A flint, yeah, more like a flint knock of your right, not Atlanta. A, a, a. Five flak though, whoa. Wait, really? Five flak? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so let me check something. Why a flag? Yeah, it's the same. It's it's literally identical. Five flag. Interesting. So it's it's straight up being uh, copy pasta. Interesting. Thank you, this is for the twenty one months, my dude. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Uh, probably earlier in the earlier in the uh, in the summer before they have all had time to like spawn. Earlier in the summer before they both had time to spawn. If you go late summer, then it's already like all the explosion has already happened. Spawn? Yeah, the, I mean, they literally spawn like from from watering. Who likes mosquitoes? Mm. Ultimately, it depends a lot on where you go, what type of countryside. 4.4 km detectability, damage control smoke. Man, this smoke is so good though. They get they get a 30 second action time, last 70 seconds, and then it has a 100 second reload. The smoke is actually god tier. You only have a half minute downtime, actually less, because if you put the flag on and if you spec any sort of cooldown on it, you're going to have, uh, your downtime is going to be something like 25 seconds between smokes. It's going to be really good. Spawn is the right term, right? Mosquitoes literally spawn, like they lay their eggs on, on water and then they spawn. Or this, yeah. Hmm. Harbin, tier 8, 26.5. Health, health benefit, not really there. You want to run survivability expert, honestly, on this. Plating 16, overmatchable by a lot then. That's like uh, current Royal Navy light cruisers. So you get the overmatch by the same thing like Henry's and such. And battle cruisers. 5x2, 130. 13, man, this range is rough. You gotta remember, you can't spec AFT anymore on cruisers. So you're stuck on this range. You can't increase it. You can't even slot the increased range on, on, on tier 8. This is like, this is getting, having the, having 12k range at tier 5 or tier 6 isn't nearly as bad as having 13k range at tier 8. Because tier 8 you start running into a lot of radars and a lot of Soviet radars especially. And uh, if you're this squishy, I think Soviets are just going to dumpster this pretty goddamn hard. Okay, 22mm pen, not exactly impressive. I mean, superstructure farm. You can kill DDs, but other than that, you're stuck farming superstructure. <coughs> Reload 5.2 with 10 guns. 
Torpedo tubes, 4 XP. Okay, that's a lot of torps. That's a lot of torps. That's 16 torps total. 17.9k, 10km range, 62 knots, and they're deep waters. So it's, it's kind of like a light cruiser with torpedo focus. Hmm. AA. Decent mid range. Flight count actually went down. Interesting. It's 6 game range though, but the long range aura. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know. For a light cruiser, this AA is very underwhelming. Hmm. Thank you for the scam train, by the way, chat. Appreciate it. Maximum speed 34, 660, rudder shift 6.9. Surface detect 12. Okay, surface detect is 12. But now you can increase it with your concealment module at tier 8. So you end up with 9.4 km conceal. And you have 10 km torps. That's not a whole lot of flexibility. I mean, can you, if the enemy team pushes into you, then the ship might be quite good. Because now you also get torpedo reload booster. So you can drop potentially um, 16 plus 16 torps, 32 deep waters on a pushing team. That sounds really strong, but in actuality, using it is probably going to be quite challenging. And I mean, I played Irian, and Irian has 13.5 km range. Oh, whoops. Oh, it's 4x3. Well, why didn't I read 4x4? I'm retarded. 4x3 is 12. Sorry, 24. I'm actually brain dead. My bad. Wait, so 4x, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, my bad. I read 4x4 accidentally. My bad, my bad, 12. So 24. Even then, it's going to be iffy, because anyone who's played Irian knows that uh, you have 13, Irian has 13.5 cam range torpedoes, I think. And even getting to use those deep waters is difficult. So even that's going to be difficult. And this guy, this guy does 33.4 with no speed boost and only 10 km torps. And you know, if you get spotted, if you get caught, like a DD is pushing in, leading the charge uh, in front of the pushing enemy team, you're basically screwed. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. They, they, they seem, these seem really hard to use. These seem really hard to use. Oh no, streamer guy said something wrong. Oh no, that never happened to me in my entire life. Smoke generator. Wait, why do they specify the radius here? Isn't it the same? Yeah, it's the same. They specify it on everyone. Still only three charges, so superintendent four charges. I think more than anything, these torps are going to be a deterrent into pushing into this smoke. But... Considering the range of this ship, you, you, someone with radar is just going to push in and dumpster it, I feel. Also, you have no hydro, so what's really preventing a D... Mm. Thank you, Granger, for the six months. You have no hydro in this thing, so what's really preventing like a DD from pushing in and just getting inside your smoke firing penalty? Like, if you try to push into a Neptune or a Minotaur smoke firing penalty, uh, Neptune is somewhat easy, but doing it against a Minotaur is really risky because you're, you're almost pushing into their Hydro range. So, so you're going to have to avoid pushing into the Hydro. But on this guy, there's no Hydro. So you can just push up to 5km, spot him with his smoke firing penalty and force him to move. I mean, you can even smoke up, you can even start shooting him. And if he pushes out of the smoke, you smoke up yourself, and he has no way of like spotting you. He's got no utility. I I don't know. Like they, these seem really hard to get value out of. That's that's really what I'm trying to look at. How do I get value out of the ship? And it seems very challenging because range is limited. No tankiness whatsoever. Super squishy. Range is limited. The AA value values aren't really there. The speed is slow. Um. Made the majority of the power focus seems to be on the torpedoes, but they're only 10k range, which means the getting value out of them is going to be difficult. I think it's going to be more like YOLO value more than anything. But how often do you get the YOLO in a light cruiser? 
Sejong, 29,800. Still not very impressive. <coughs> 12 guns, 13.3 range. Still very limited. At least you can build range on it now to extend it. You can slot the range module at tier 9. 21mm pen, chance to cause fire. 5.2 second reload. 4x4. Now we got 16 torps. 17.9. 12k range. That already makes it. Oh, and faster. Didn't they get faster as well? 62, 67. These seem to be extremely torpedo focused. But like, getting to use torpedoes on a cruiser is rough, especially if there's a CV around. Because he's just going to spot you. And DDs are going to spot you. And all, of, all these things are going to spot you. And these things don't really. Like, 12k range is going to be hard to utilize now. A Whoa, AA just exploded. What happened? Holy shit, what happened to the AA? The AA went from pitiful to 238, 270, 175, 10 flak with the 90% accuracy. And even the alpha damage on the flak went up a shit ton. Because the tier 9 got a huge AA power spike. Like, absolutely gigantic power spike. Suddenly you're at 10 flak with good accuracy, 6 game range. Your mid-range go went from 3.5 to 4, and your overall numbers went up across the board. So the AA, this already makes this a lot better at dealing with any sort of CV harassing it. Air did give 7.4, but you can reduce that. Yeah, it, this thing is not going to be nearly as, as easy to mess with with the, with the CV as the other one. Still quite slow though. 33 knots. Handles well, 12.3 conceal, that's uh, 9.7, 9.7 uh, spotting. At least you have 12 cam torps, like that gives you a lot more flexibility than, than the 10 cam torps. Because now you can actually, you, you got a much bigger like radius, safety radius where you can use your torpedoes. And they're faster. So the torpedoes are absolutely more useful here, but even then it's it's not exactly exactly ideal playing playing a cruiser torpedo boat. Hmm. At least you they, you gotta keep in mind though, chat, that you can't unlike on the destroyer line, on the cruiser line you can build for torpedo damage. That's something you can't do in the DD line, but um, the cruiser line actually has the option. The cruiser line actually has the option to spec into torpedo damage. You get 10% reload and you get 15% damage where switch and you can also get the speed. So you have a whole line dedicated just for this. And I guess everyone questioned why they would add this because who's going to use it. But I guess this new line is literally tailor made for this commander spec. I think that's like part of why they're adding it. They're, they're trying to make torpedo cruisers a thing. And I mean, they've been teasing Kitakami a lot lately as well. Um, probably another reason. But you got to keep in mind that you can increase by 15 and reload by 10 and the speed by 5%. So <coughs> potential torpedoes can get can get like significantly stronger. Like, um, what is it? 15% on, on this is going to be 20.6k uh, alpha on, on these torps. So... Instead of doing 17.9, you're doing a 20k, over 20k, closer to 21 actually. So now you get damage control, defensive torpedo reload booster. You have your repair party. Very questionable repair party. Not doesn't heal a whole lot. Just a normal heal. It gets percentage based and standard three smokes. But you're going to be able to drop a lot of torps with this. It's just getting value out of a torpedo cruiser is difficult. I like the Irian, um, but getting value out of those torpedoes is very, very hit and miss. Like all it takes is one, one DD scouting and uh, you won't hit anything or one hydro ship and you won't hit anything. And that's why generally torpedo cruisers are much less valuable than normal cruisers because normal cruisers just use their guns to get value. Whereas you need to be landing torpedoes to get value. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Hit points 30.7. Yina. 
Main battery 5x, 227 firing range, 13.5, still very questionable firing range. 1.8k HA Alpha, 21mm pen, just enough to punch through the DS. But something like, yeah, I don't know, I feel like almost like this line was added to give uh, the German uh, Elbing and Schultz something to kill. AP shell, reload line 3.8. That's a pretty nasty reload though. Four X five, hmm, twenty torps, twenty torps with thirteen point five cam range, sixty nine speed reload, hundred and thirty. Wow, so you you drop twenty torps, then you drop reload booster, and you drop another twenty torps, so forty torp set. That's a lot of torpedoes with thirteen point five cam range. Jesus, and you can boost the speed, you can boost the damage, you can boost the speed, and you can boost the reload quite significantly. Jesus, Kitakami in disguise, right? That's a lot of torps, and they're deep water as well, which is really rough because, like, this is the kind of ship you can't really push into unless you have hydro. But as a battleship, even if you have hydro, you probably don't want to push into this because there's so many torpedoes coming your way that it's going to be almost impossible to dodge. Hmm. Deep water Kitakami, Jesus. Uh. Flag count went down, but in return you lost your useless mid-range and you, or short range and everything became mid-range. Remember with defensive AA this becomes quite filthy. And the flag hits very hard, 8 flag with 90% accuracy. The 9 and 10 seems to have pretty good AA. 35 knots, huge speed increase. We went from what, 33 to 35. Rudder shift 7.7, .7. surface to 12.5. 12.5, that leaves us at... 9.8 9.8 it's not gonna be that easy maybe to use but if an enemy tries to push in on your flank this thing is gonna eat them alive like you drop your full set of torpedoes and then you smoke up and you start farming if anyone hit people get hit by torps they flood you get fires like uh i, ca I can see this thing being super filthy if the enemy tries to push in there if you have to chase it's probably gonna suck a lot because trying to chase anyone with this ship is going to suck, like, how do you even do it? You have to stop and smoke because you have no health, you can't open water gun boat. Um, but if the enemy pushes into you, this thing is going to be monstrous. <coughs> okay, and Dalian, the premium, huh? 5x230, 13.5 range, 22. Much better shell velocity than any of these others. Much better shell velocity. 4x3, so 12. Oh, these are normal torps, not deep water. Keep that in mind. Very stealthy though for, what the hell? 1.2 conceal for 60 knots. What? That's really stealthy. Interesting. Really stealthy for surface torps. I keep in mind that uh, Shimakaze torps have a stealth of something like 1.7, 1.8. Interesting. Americans are like what 1.3 1.4 let me actually check well Atlanta has torps let's see these are 1.3 so okay 1.2 conceal there's 60 knots though hmm interesting but this one was uh, tier 9 right Fletcher Fletcher in comparison Fletcher has 1.4 conceal 10 cam, 10.5 cam range, and 66. So they're pretty stealthy, they're pretty stealthy. 1.2 is a good conceal to have on torpedoes. AA, eh, it's not actually, I think, as strong as the tech trait tier 9. You do, no, you don't, I don't feel like you don't have near as much on it. The, sh the short range range is better, I think, though. Speed 33.4, 666. Surface 11.3 surface. That's really good, though. Wait, that's really good. With camo module and concealment skill, that's 8.9. 8.9 conceal. Damn. 4.9 smoke fire penalty as well. 8.9 conceal. And this thing gets hydro. And no, oh, this is, see, you see this? Detectability after firing main guns in smoke, 4.9. Hydroacoustic search, ship detection, 5. So unlike the entire tech tree line, 
this uh, premium cannot be spotted in a smoke. Because if you try to push in in a DD and spot this thing, you get hydroed and you get smashed by the ship itself. So unlike all the other ones, this one cannot get punished by it. Damage repair and smoke. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. No torpedo reload booster on this one though. I guess that's a trade-off. You get hydro instead. Okay. Next one. We got a lot of doblegs. Apparently they posted another dobleg as well. So yeah, we got doblegs out the ass today, boys. Holy moly. We got a lot of updates coming. Let's see. Next up. <coughs> oh! Visual improvements. My favorite department at Wargaming. My favorite department at Wargaming. I love this guy. Visual improvements. In, in 0.10.10, players will see massive visual improvements, some of which have already been announced earlier in the development log. Now we would like to share further details on these changes. Water update. Water simulation and visual looks have been completely reworked. Waves now have a realistic dynamics, featuring different heights and shapes. An effect of rocking the ship on the waves will be created. Oh shit. This change, however, will not affect the gameplay of the game. Updated ship wake effect, added dynamic sea foam and improved water surface visuals. HD textures, fuck yes. Added high detail textures to the following maps, Two Brothers, Hotspots as well as Ports Philippines and Pinterest Twitch. In future updates, we will continue to work on the rest of the maps and ports. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, you can't. Man, that, that water though. Oh man, oh man, my favorite department. Oh man, my favorite, the water is looking so much better. Oh babe, my favorite department. There's a reason why I call them the, the super unicums at Wargaming, because they do all the carrying, man. They got a bunch of potatoes, they got the marketing department, they're literally PR, red 30% win rate guys that ground 24 7 that's the marketing department then they, then they got the balancing department literally huffing the loo 35% win rate grounding 24 7 and then they got the PR department that have basically uninstalled the game they're no longer present as can be said but then you got the super unicums the uh, visual and art department and my god they're carrying them they're carrying them so hard across the finish line you love to see it you love to see it Moon Hooligan, thank you for the 16 months. Continue added underwater vegeta vegetation. Ah, oh, underwater. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, this is all because they want to add subs to everything. I mean, they, they, this has been their plan from the start, adding submarines to everything. It's coming. It's inevitable. On all maps and ports, stream modes have been, be, become more detailed and varied. Birds, fish, and waving flags, other objects. Are, ooh. More animations, that's cool. It gives it more like life life likeness. I mean that's cool if you were to play a submarine, because clearly that's what the silent majority wants. Interesting. <coughs> Ways of distribution of new ships. Details about which resource some of the new ships will be available for in the upcoming updates. Okay, early bet, nothing for free XP. Why do I know that? Why do I think there's going to be nothing for free XP? Because when Carrot or, or the Carnot, the French tier 9 super cruiser was added, this was the perfect opportunity to Wargaming to add a free XP cruiser, just like they've done for all the other nations. We had Azuma, we had Alaska, we had Eger, we had Kronstadt. All nations have had a free XP tier 9 super cruiser, and Carnot was not free XP. So that's basically, free XP ships are gone. They are gone. There's no way there's going to be any. They have basically scrapped that entire thing. Future, for, apart from earlier, you will have an opportunity. For, okay. Kearsarge. Coal. Of course it is. Kearsarge, the little thing looks really pepega. It's probably the ugliest ship you've ever seen. Tulsa, Oregon class. This was the mini Des Moines. The mini Des Moines. Cool. Gibraltar? 
Research. <laughs> yeah, nothing for free, of course not. A heavy cruiser with 234mm main battery artillery. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Of these, uh, Tulsa probably looks the most interesting. Mini Des Moines at tier 9. <coughs> okay, here we go. Submar oh, here we go. 0 0.10.9. Submarines, next steps. Details on further steps of submarine testing. Submarines have come a long way. No, they haven't. From the first announcement in the summer of 2019, actually from 2016 when you promised that you will never add submarines to World of Warships. I think that was the first step, the pr that promise. There will never be submarines in World of Warships. That was, I think, the first step. Uh, but let's skip that step. Uh, from the first announcement summer 2003 steps, the temporary submarine battles type. And again, a test. During this time, we collected a lot of feedback and statistics. Oxygen was replaced with battery charge and later with dive capacity. We updated the sonar. Yada, 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 yada. So many, such a big silent majority that asked for this, man. Submarines have now been participating in ranked and cooperative battle for almost two months. We're grateful to you, the battles played, and for providing the feedback that helped shape the next steps in the development of submarines. And you ignored it all. Everything we said about the maps feeling empty and dead because there's not enough surface ships to take part in the action. You have ignored it because your servers can't handle it. Changes to submarine gameplay. Based on your feedback and collected statistics, we've planned a number of changes. We'll add ASDW to most battleships and cruisers. Okay. This change in, will allow all classes to counter submarines while underwater. A class that's already, with the help of anti-submarine aircraft, it will be easier to deal with submarines, enabling you to strike at them from a distance and choosing the affected area with a, okay. Other changes. Torpedoes will now be launched one by one. The gameplay will become more dynamic. And this will give you more control over the torpedoes fired. And this will put such a heavy burden on an already overburdened system, which is damage gone. Battleships are already horrendously, like battleship damage gone already has to deal with so many, so much bullshit. You got AP bombers and torpedoes breaking engines. You got, well, just rudder broken. You got fires, you got flooding. And then you had, now you had to deal with pings as well. And now you add single launch torpedoes. So an already incredibly burdened damage con is gonna become even more burdened. Changes to torpedo characteristics. German submarines were worse at dealing damage, of course. What's surprising is you actually buffed them. What about Grosse Gorhorst? We're also improving their torpedo range. American submarines, the range of their torpedoes have been reduced. Okay. So buff the German, nerf the American. The increase in the depletion of the dive capacity in zero point has too much effect on comfort of the game and the effect in the submarines. Okay. We've also changed the settings for submarine bots in co-op and training battle based on your feedback. AI controlled submarines will take a more active part in combat. This will help avoid situations where the battle was unnecessarily prolonged. Okay, how do you prevent the battle from being unnecessarily prolonged by a human player playing a submarine? Because that also happens. Not in co-op though, but in PvP. We'll continue, yada 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 yada, as well as the ships opposing them. Okay. Before getting into the details, we would like you to discuss your feedback regarding submarines. One of the most addressed points of feedback was homing torpedoes. What about the empty map? We understand for some of you this may seem like an unusual mechanic, but with the changes we have made to the peculiarities of the submarine weapons, this mechanic can become a full-fledged and interesting part of the game. We created it taking into account how submarines acted in reality, tracking a target and yada yada yada. Of course, we have to adapt. We tried to convey the atmosphere of naval operations on submarines as close to reality as possible within the framework of the game. What the hell? That's not how pings work. That's not how torpedoes work. Realism, by the way. How is this even remotely close to reality? Why did they need homing torps to make it close to reality? What? You will be able to immerse yourself in that submarine feeling. Yeah, it's it's really immersive when I'm playing a destroyer and I get double pinged and I have to dodge incoming homing torpedoes in my hard countering class. Like what? Or I have to worry about some submarine coming up on surface to shotgun me with his torps. At least they nerfed that to some extent. 
<clears throat> the localization using ping hit is displayed on your ship, which allows you to determine from which side the submarine is attacking and to try to minimize the potential damage. Torpedoes stop homing at a particular distance. Is counted considering the lead. Therefore, if you're headed towards torpedoes with your bow, the distance at which torpedoes stop homing increases, and the chances to evade increase as well. Interesting. From up to open terminal, also. so you have to run at them. From up to open almost all ships. No need to fear that somewhere. Another frequently cited point is use the damage control consumable to reset torpedo homing. We understand that. For some of you, this may seem counterintuitive, but so far we do not see the need for changes in this area. Yes, because you don't want anyone pushing in in a battleship, because apparently if you push in, you're supposed to die. <coughs> Brilliant. We see it as an opportunity for you to work with the damage control. In this case, you choose, depending on the situation, what is better to do. Extinguish a fire, stop flooding, or get rid of torpedo homing. How about when all of those things happen? Because that's what happens when you push in. Hello? These people don't play the game. Like, you cannot push in if there's a submarine pinging you. It's already impossible. And God forbid adding other people actually focusing you, which is what happens if you try to push in. You actually don't play the game anymore, do you? Jesus. Moreover, the ping itself does not create an additional load on the damage control party, but only redistributes it. After all, if another ship were in place of the submarine, it could set you on fire with HE shells. <laughs> what? Are they shitting me? Are they really trying to compare the potential alpha damage of a submarine, chunking you for half your HP of unhealable citadel damage, to a potential fire from an HE shell. What? First of all, fires can be 100% healed. Submarine de torpedo damage is citadel damage. Battleships can only heal 10% of it. That's why it's so incredibly crippling. Second of all, the torpedoes also break your engine and cause flooding, which leave you dead in the water. And also, if they're spamming me with HE shells, they are most likely on a battleship suit shooting the superstructure, which gets saturated, which means it takes reduced damage. That does not happen with torpedoes. Jesus, you fucking imbeciles actually aren't playing your game anymore. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Jesus. They actually hate the idea of people brawling. They just hate the idea of people brawling in this game. This is another layer of the game that needs to be taken into account in battle, which is easy to understand, but quite difficult to master perfectly. Yeah, you're one to talk, holy shit. You need to choose the right moment to use the right consumable. The ping has a five second cooldown. Submarines can launch torpedoes individually with what, a couple of seconds cooldown. My battleship damage con has an 80 second cooldown. You really need to tell me what is the right moment to use that consumable. Holy shit. Maybe they all just play Kremlin, like they have Soviet damage con, so they're used to having like a 30 second cooldown on them. For now, we want to continue testing the mechanics in their current form to look more closely at how this will interact with the other changes. At the same time, we'll remain open to your feedback in a player act. Often there are proposals to change it from 12 or to increase this number due to addition of summaries. Yes, this is literally mandatory. Otherwise, the, the game will feel so empty and so abandoned. At this moment, we are not considering this possibility for various reasons. Of course you aren't. Of course you aren't, because your servers can't handle it and you don't want to spend money on better servers. Your servers already struggle with 12 versus 12. God forbid, if there's two CVs in a game, the server starts actively lagging. They're still desync at long ranges. The reason why you won't increase it from 12 versus 12 is because your shitty servers can't handle it and you're not willing to spend money to improve our gaming experience. One of them, most important, is the increase in the number of elements that you need to monitor. Another is an increase in load. This is the real reason. And your computers. No, this is the real reason. You can you can paint all of this. You can paint over everything else. You can paint over everything else, and only this word needs to be left because this is the only reason. 
They could improve their servers and fix this issue. But that's means spending money. Furthermore, a 12 vs 12 battle already creates many events that have to be kept in mind if you want to have a successful match and lead your team to victory. Holy shit, this PR speak. And increasing the number of players taking into account specifically of a game, open water and often the ability to shoot from one part of the map to the opposite will significantly complicate this task. Do they actually play? No, they don't. At the moment, we would not want to resort to this solution and believe that it will worsen the overall gameplay. There will also be more contacts and interactions in game that have to be tracked if there are more players in battle. And lastly, increasing the number of total players would impact the influence you as an individual have on the battle results. In conclusion, we believe that this is not something the game needs right now. But what does the game need? Apparently fucking submarines. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! <sighs> they just had to, like, I, like as soon as they announced them, I said they were gonna. They were these are they are gonna, regardless of how dumb it is, regardless of how bad it is for the game. Hmm. I I said I, I said this at the start. When they introduce submarines, I said they are gonna squeeze those into random battles no matter what the feedback is, no matter how shit it is. Because Wargaming, when they start investing money into something, they are completely incapable of admitting that it's a bad idea. Just look at the CV rework. An absolute disaster, and they kept squeezing it in, and they they, they still are they still rebalancing CVs, because they're still not done with it. They've been doing it for two years now. And they they are huge victims of sunk cost fallacy and because inside the company there is this kind of thing where they are completely unwilling to admit that they made mistakes uh so they just keep squeezing that same shit mechanic over and over again so this was this was sadly extremely predictable it just came faster than i thought Some of you also mentioned that the introduction of submarines in the current format will reduce the number of gunfights between the ship, which they will. This is true, yep. But the art game is developing, and new types of interaction between ships will appear. Yeah, I know, you're adding planes to everything. You added an entire Dutch cruiser line that has no guns and only has planes. You're adding hybrid ships. You keep adding CVs. You're adding Kearsarge. You're adding Tone. You're adding Ise. New ways of interaction are surely appearing, but that's not why people started playing the game. People started playing the game because they wanted to see what happens when Mr. Iowa fights Mr. Yamato, a historical battle. They didn't start playing the game to see, hey, what happens if this submarine strikes my Immelman uh, on the, in the corner of the map? That's not the goddamn reason. How out of touch are you? While there may be fewer targets to be fired at, at long and medium distances, this will add new interactions and a new layer of gameplay. For example, judging by the test results, you enjoy dropping death charges. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we enjoyed we enjoyed pressing G. That's a reason to add submarines. We believe that this will add another variable to battles that will make each game you play even more unique and provide new experiences that you will enjoy. Holy shit. Submarine testing and ranked will continue in the 0.9.10 update. Currently, they prove themselves worth it. The, the upcoming changes will further out. Submarines have taken a long time throughout numbers testing changes. We're going to analyze thoroughly not just data, but also feedback. Oh, that's a bullshit. Trying to answer it in detail. There are plenty of changes. Yada, 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 yada. Now we come to a new and very important stage of testing. Submarines participating in random battles in update 0 0.10.9. We'd also like to share why we want to have such a test. Because you want to, f you have, you have already spent money on developing them. You're building underwater worlds. You have spent so much time and money on it that there is no way you can resist squeezing it into the game, which was your plan from the start. No matter how well or poorly it went, they were going to squeeze it into the game. Some cost fallacy is real. We would also like to share. Long and close relationship. First reason, yeah, 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 yeah. by adding submarines. Uh, yeah, yeah. Next point is the 12. We've already tested submarines, but the 12 changes the battle pace and intensity significantly. 
No, I actually can. It's important to limit them for some reason. There will be no more than two per team for the initial four minutes of waiting, and no more than four summaries when waiting more than four minutes. So potentially, out of twelve players, four DDs, two subs. That's half the team plus CV. So five slots remaining for battleships or cruisers. But how many people are want to play battleships if there's like four DDs and two subs and a CV? Probably not too many. Jesus. We made this limit rather as a precaution. Yada yada yada. We do not expect they're roughly speaking, we're aiming at it. Oh no. They have a popularity goal again, chat. No. No. No, no, no. No, this is, you know what we're seeing here? We are aiming at a 4 to 8% popularity at tier 10. We will be watching this metric very carefully and take action to keep popularity in this range. This is exactly what they did with the CV rework. They had a popularity goal where uh, the players, number of CV players never were allowed to drop below 15%. This is the exact same thing. And every time the popularity of CVs went down, because people didn't enjoy playing them because they were boring, they would buff CVs or they would nerf AA to artificially boost the popularity. So now we have a popularity goal again. Oh no. This is exactly what they did with the CV rework. They're literally repeating the same mistakes. Fuck. Same goddamn mistake with the CV rework. Instead of trying to make the class more enjoyable and better or more dynamic or whatever, they just buffed it or nerfed the counterplay. That's what they did with CVs to keep the balance numbers, the popularity numbers. Fucking hell. This company actually doesn't know how to balance things. Rental submarines will be available for random bundles. Yay. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Jesus. Dude. Why did I have to sabotage my favorite game? Like, to summarize that entire article, thank you for your feedback, uh, but we disagree with all of it, and here's submarines that you actually didn't want. God damn it. Also, tier people that random bundles for tier 10 subs. So it, it, there's no limits on them. Anyone, anyone who's never has any experience playing anything is going to be able to get a rental tier 10 and play submarines. Like you, you're literally going to have people who have tier 4 ships are going to be sailing around in subs in tier 10. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me. Why? You know it's going to suck.
one and a half year later. Here we are. One and a half year later, here we are. Aged like milk. <laughs>